The trading card game market is about to explode like your boy's ultra ball at a night at the club. We need to talk about the market because uh, this could be a really bad sign of things to come. But hear what I have to say first before you start wanting to throw me into Jolly Rogers Bay and watch me drown. So smack me in the face and call me dad. Let's dive on into this video, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo card fight buddy guard stain of that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1200 ladder, we are only 20 subscribers away from 1300, ladies and gentlemen. If we hit 1300 subscribers, I will douse myself in maple syrup and let someone call me dad. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out as time passes. <laughs> Hope you're having a fantastic day. Really appreciate all the support. You know, I was watching a video uh, yesterday from Robbie Cole where he talked about how he didn't spend $20,000 on Mega Tins and blah, 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 all this other stuff. The main point that he did mention in the video was something that I actually wanted to discuss because the more I looked into it, the more I realized, you know, the trading card game market is getting really fat and not fat P-H-A-T, like looking good fat. No, it's getting fat F-A-T. It's not something that looks promising for the future of trading card games in general, but especially Yu-Gi-Oh. So basically what Robbie Cole talked about is that there's been a lot of different card games out on the market. A lot of people are getting into different card games. And this is an interesting point of discussion because we've seen markets like this in different ways in the past. So by that, I mean in the early to mid 80s, at least in the United States, I live in Florida, so I can only talk about the United States market. I don't know if it happened in Europe. I know it didn't happen in like Japan and stuff, but there was a video game crash, like the video game crash in 1984 or 85, something like that. Um, and it was basically this thing where people stopped buying video games because people were like, all this stuff is garbage because everybody and their mother wanted a piece of the video game pie. So you had freaking, what was it? Cereal makers like Lucky Charms putting out these like dog water shovelware video games. Like you've heard of shovelware games, like where they're just garbage, but this is like a shovel with like dog shit on it. Like it, th these games were terrible for the eighties back then. So people stopped buying video games and the market just imploded in itself. And you can kind of see similar things like this in today's world, like with Disney plus and all the different subscription services, HBO max, Disney, crunchy roll, you name it. You have all of these different subscription services where even though a lot of people have cut the cable cord, it's also like you end up investing potentially in so many different subscription services that it becomes cheaper to have a cable bill that has a package where you also get say like Disney plus or HBO max, Netflix, whatever, than it is to have like 10 different subscription services and paying all of those monthly, if that makes sense. Well, I feel like now we're starting to see this in the card game market. Uh, I would say it's happened slowly but surely over time. And some of these games obviously are more popular than others. But I feel like that this really got shown when Lorcana came into the fray from Disney. And you know that Disney's got money out of its ass. Even with uh, what I'm going to say is just all the woke stuff going on. I don't want to get into it. But if you've been keeping up with Disney, you've been seeing how they've been hemorrhaging money because of decisions that they've been making, and I'll leave it at that. Now, this is sort of a double-edged sword because at least here in the United States, uh, I don't care what anyone says, we're in a fucking recession, like honestly. Like, we've been seeing negative growth quarter after quarter. The, the United States, at least the U.S. at the very least, is in a recession. I can't speak for any other country, but the U.S. at least is in a recession. I think people just want to deny it. But when you look at the TCG market, you know, I'm looking here at TCG player, you know, just to name off like some of these, you know, we have Disney Lorcana now, we have Future Card Buddy Fight, Flesh and Blood, Final Fantasy, Exodus, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super. Uh, some places you got Force of Will. If you live here in Jacksonville, Florida, you don't have Force of Will because that community died a long ass time ago and the game is apparently really expensive. You got Card Fight Vanguard, Battle Spirits, Bakugan, Argent Saga, Akora, Light Seekers, Lorcana, I, uh, Lorcan, I mentioned that, Meta X, Meta Zoo, Munchkin, My Little Pony because apparently that has to be shit. Uh, like, uh, someone just had to make a card game out of that. Like, Star Wars Destiny, Transformers TCG, uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. I think that's more of, like, um, figures. Uh, Why Shores has been around for a while. War World of Warcraft TCG, Zombie World Order TCG. 
The point that I'm making with all this is that we're seeing a lot more games in the market besides just like the big three being Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. You know, if you wanted to play a card game, those were basically your three until we got like Digimon, Flesh and Blood, and now we've got like one piece of stuff. But of course, all that stuff came later. And some of these games are cheaper than others. Some are more expensive than others, like One Piece. Lorcana has been getting scalped out the ass because it's a Disney product. It's a Disney IP. So of course, people are going to scalp it for all of the profit. But... With Yu-Gi-Oh! being in what I would argue is a really stale format right now, like we're still waiting on a new balance to clean up cash tier and all these things, people are going to go to different games to at least try them and see what they're like. People are going to see like, hey, is this game going to take off? Is it going to be competitive? Is it going to be the next Magic, the next Pokemon, the next whatever? You know, people all the time tell me, bro, Pokemon's such a great game because you can pay 50 to 60 bucks and have a tier one deck. You can have the deck that won Worlds for so cheap and be able to play it and not break the bank. Whereas you look at something like Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know, Cash Tira at its peak was what? I remember seeing prices for like five, six hundred dollars. Even some were like at seven hundred. If you want like pre-sales, just to make sure that you have it, that's expensive. And especially with how the economy is right now, people want to have a hobby for a cheap price. You know, uh, whether your apartment prices or your house prices, if you're renting, are three thousand dollars a month, eleven hundred dollars a month for an apartment. You know, people have these bills that they have to take care of way before they start considering playing Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, whatever, competitively or even on the casual level. And I think with Yu-Gi-Oh especially, that's gotten a lot more difficult to even get into the game casually because there is a decent amount of investment there. You know, I'm sure we all remember the days when you could pick up a starter deck or even a structure deck for $9.99 from your local OTS store or Walmart. Basically 10 bucks, we'll say $10.30 after tax, depending on what taxes are like in your area. So for 10 bucks and change, you've got yourself a deck that you can play. You pick up three copies for, let's say, $33 after tax, 30 bucks after tax, whatever. You now have a potentially a meta deck or a rogue deck. You've got three copies of everything from the structure deck to play and at least be somewhat competitive at your locals or possibly get your invite at a regional. It was very easy in that regard to get into the game. Now, even though the prices have only gone up by a couple bucks, $10.99, $11.99, whatever it is now, that's still more of an investment that people have to make, whether it's because the prices of creating these structure decks has gone up for Konami or they're just being money hungry, that makes it harder to get into. You know, you're spending, let's say, 34 to $35 after taxes on three structure decks, whereas f for maybe $10 more, you get a tier one deck in Pokemon or, you know, for another, I don't know the price of Magic, but let's just say for $40, you can get the best deck in Magic in expanded format, whatever the hell, whatever format you decide to play in. And now we're in a situation where Konami has put out their mega tens for this year. People don't, at least from what I've seen online, people don't care to buy them because the tin toppers being quarter century, quarter century secret rares, like that's cool, but you're only getting one. And if you want to get them, you're better off just buying singles and paying a few bucks for those on the secondary market. All of the reprints that are coming out, these are cards that are most likely going to get hit on the next ban list. People don't feel like picking up these cards because they're burnt out on this format. Things like Eradicator need to be banned. Cash Tira Fenrir needs to be hit. Cash Tira in general needs to be hit. Uh, Labyrinth needs to be hit. You know, there's these issues in the format that even though it's a diverse format, people are still tired of seeing and want to be taken care of. And when you have all of these different card games all fighting for your attention, that makes it difficult, one, for other card games to survive. Two, if card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, where Konami doesn't step up to the plate and say, hey, we're going to interact more with our players. We're going to put an end date on our balance. We're going to do these things. They're going to start falling to the wayside when these better games come along. However, at the same time, something that we could also see is because there's so many card games in the, the world of trading card games now, we could see the market implode. We could see people start to back out of card games altogether because there's just so many to pick from. Or it just becomes so expensive, no matter what game it is. Or the community becomes toxic, whatever the case may be. And so the point of me making this video is that with all of these card games coming out and trying to be the next Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, whatever, it makes me worry that we are going to see less and less people getting into card games in general because the market is so saturated and we could see it crash 
and then like nothing is valuable or like card games just start dying because players just don't care to play them for whatever reason. Now, this does also mean on the positive side of that, that something like Yu-Gi-Oh could rise to the occasion and get better and get more players into it. But when you have a terrible game like Master Duel, aka Master Shits, when you're in a terrible format, when you don't give an end date on your balance, when you don't communicate with the players why you made changes on the balance, like you did for a couple balance, you put out an article explaining the balance, and now you didn't do that for this most recent one. And it's like, why? Konami needs to step up to the plate. They need to give us a balance. They need to do these things to kind of kickstart the engine of Yu-Gi-Oh! again and let us know what's going on. Age of Overlord is going to be a fantastic set, and I don't see a lot of people talking about it because most people don't care about the game right now. So they're going to Pokemon. They're going to Lorcana, MetaZoo, whatever. And that doesn't mean that that's good for Yu-Gi-Oh! The less players you have, the less chance the game has to survive. And of course, we all want to see it succeed. Even if we don't like the format, if you like the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! in whatever capacity, you want to see it succeed and do well. So guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. I thought that this would be a bit of an interesting discussion. Um, yeah, I, I think that we got a lot of card games in the world and uh, it might be a little bit too much. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.